we're going to be talking about six ways that you can still find enjoyment from Magic the Gathering if you are disappointed in the products. I've been voicing my disappointments more and more, but it never gets to the point where I outright give up on the game because it is important to distinguish between the game and the products. The game is way more resilient. If you don't like a certain product cycle, and you want Wizards of the Coast to know, you want Hasbro to know, the first thing you can do to find more enjoyment, while also having a positive impact, is to avoid buying any new sealed products. Older ones from like 5 plus years ago are not going to have an impact on what Wizards of the Coast creates in the future. So if you're looking to buy sealed, I would recommend buying something that's old and sealed. And chances are local game stores have plenty of inventory. It may seem like sealed is easier to move, easier to sell, but it's actually the opposite. Once interest around the newer sets fade, the sealed products are much, much harder to move. So if you're buying something sealed but it's 5 years old, you're doing your local game store a massive favor. And also, older booster boxes just have better value. Second thing you can do kind of ties in with the first, continue buying singles from your LGS. The caveat being the newer singles you want to avoid for the most part, but if you absolutely have to get cards from the newest set that you like, stick to buying singles because that ultimately will benefit your game store more than Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro directly. Singles are very important. In fact, I would say most game stores that are centered around Magic the Gathering must sell singles because if they depend entirely on sealed products, they will likely go out of business. And every successful game store that prioritizes Magic the Gathering has some sort of emphasis on buying and selling singles. Here in Maryland, we have Black Sun Games, which I'm willing to go out on a limb and say it's probably the best game store here in Maryland in Frederick. And the foundation going into that business for the owner was to buy and sell singles that people were genuinely interested in. And the margin for profit is very important because... While Hasbro, they have their own margin for profit that's insane with $1,000 sealed products, buying singles is going to help your local game store because the margin of profit is so much more flexible. Sealed is harder to move, it's harder to justify buying large quantities of sealed, so your local game store is more likely to appreciate sales of singles as it means they can actually set their own margins because of course it's not just simply selling singles, it's buying and selling. So they'll buy from you for around 60% of what your collection's worth. Turn around, sell that for something much higher than 60%. But any business that forms the foundation around the interest in single cards, those tend to do the best. Next thing I would recommend is continue participating at your locals. This doesn't mean you have to make any kind of purchase. Just simply existing at your locals is the entire basis for Friday Night Magic. Because keep in mind, those events are not that profitable. If there was any profit to be made, it was indirectly. I've never had any complaints from owners just having people there to play Magic, because that's a lot of the people that come and go. They don't have to buy anything, it's just the idea that traffic naturally generates interest in the store and what they have to sell. Creates a reputation that this is the place to be if you want to hang out with your friends. And that's one of the best things you can do if you love the game, if you hate the product, because ultimately it's in your best interest to keep these places around as the community becomes more apathetic towards the more recent products. You can still encourage interest in the game itself and older products. The next thing that you're going to see, it's very common in every comment section on YouTube, every Reddit thread. There's always someone that's going to sell their entire collection. What I'm going to tell you is do not panic sell. You have every right to feel betrayed by Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro and, and to take it out on them by absolutely withdrawing from the game. And I know that not everyone's financial situation is the same and you might have a financial reason to sell your entire collection. But if your only motivation to sell your collection, is to spite Hasbro, to spite Wizards, you should probably consider waiting, because this is maybe the worst time to sell off your entire collection. It's been a rough past couple of years, and it's going to be hard to find anyone who would give you a, a decent value for your collection, without just going to a store and saying, give me my 50-60%. to 60%. Same thing with the stock market, do not panic sell. Impulse can sometimes be a good thing, but when it comes to absolutely giving up and cashing out, it could lead to massive regret. And there's really nothing wrong with your collection. If you're someone who's a legacy player, you've been playing Eternal formats for a long time, most of the cards you have are from a more positive time in Magic the Gathering's history. So just be willing to wait a little bit longer. If you have to withdraw from the game because you can't stand it anymore, you can't stand Wizards, then just box them up and put them in a closet somewhere. Out of sight, out of mind, until maybe you recover some interest in the game. But it's not a coincidence, most of the people that I've heard about selling their entire collections have regretted it. Seeing that the value of cards, it generally does improve over time, especially the older reserve list ones. Putting it off for maybe another year or two until you get a feeling for what you want to do with them is never a bad idea. Next thing you could try is to explore Eternal Formats if you haven't already. 
I know this doesn't apply to everyone who watches my channel because this is primarily a Commander channel. Chances are you have been playing Commander. But the great thing about Eternal Formats is that it does highlight the older cards from the older sets. Same thing with Legacy, same thing with Vintage. If you play Vintage, you could have an entire Commander deck built with cards before 2022. If 2022 is the year that you cannot stand for Magic products, maybe it's 2020. Set a cutoff for the cards that you're willing to include inside your deck. We are fortunate enough to enjoy a game with several different formats. It's not at all like a game such as Yu-Gi-Oh! where they have the opposite problem and a lack of total format support. So everything's out of control, planned obsolescence, and a collectible market that doesn't really see a lot of movement. At least not compared to old Magic cards. Because we have different formats, it means that there's always an escape. If you hated Standard, the answer was play a format where there isn't a rotation. If you don't like the modern ban list, play something like Legacy or Commander. The older the format, the fewer the bannings, generally speaking. And the next thing that you could do, which is something that not many people try, create new formats for your own playgroup. Keep in mind, that's how Commander started to begin with. That's how most formats begin. It's not something that Wizards of the Coast creates and passes down to us. It's because we, the players, decided we wanted an escape from this other format that we felt fatigued by, and the newer product cycles just didn't interest us anymore. So let's make one where we play with older cards and have a straight cutoff at 2020 or 2022. No newer cards, that would be a very interesting format. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who are already experimenting with that kind of format in mind. But folks, it's not the end of the world. I don't think the game is dead. I think the product cycle is going to go through a massive change though. It's going to have to or else we're going to see a bit of a mass exodus. But I think with 29 years of overall pretty decent products, pretty decent cards, we can outweigh Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. I wanted to make this video as a change of pace because I know people hear me complain and they go, well, what are your solutions? What do we do? It's not anything that we didn't already know about. I just know people need to feel reassured during these times. You're going to see a lot of other YouTubers say it's the end of the world, that because of the 30th anniversary scam, this signals the end of the game. And while it certainly doesn't feel good, this is going to be the darkest year, one of the darkest years, I think the game's going to continue just fine. The products are going to have to change. And in order for the products to change, you have to just reinforce what you like about the game while abstaining from the current product cycle. I am a fan of Uncomfortable Truths because it really does help you to center yourself because I understand how these businesses operate. I understand that they are in growth mode right now. Rapid product releases, one after another, to try to generate more interest in the game, to try to grow it. So when they make mistakes, it's not the end of the world to me. You just have to take your disappointment and channel it into something positive. Doesn't mean you ignore it outright. You can still complain all you want. That's constructive criticism. They deserve to hear your constructive criticism. Just know that you can make a difference if you want to. You can tell your playgroup to do the same exact thing. Spread the word. Believe it or not, local game stores are not just out here shilling for Wizards of the Coast and every single decision they're making. Of course, they want to be sanctioned. That's within their interests. But if you just talk with the owners for these stores, they overwhelmingly understand why we don't like their products. That's why I recommend you buy singles because that still helps them out. You get to enjoy the game. You get to enjoy a place where you can play the game while also, in a way, giving Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast the finger. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.